with a caravan. Do you know what I mean? He'd be happy then. Fishing chips, caravan, and he's fucking wanking. You're very welcome to the Lightweight Boxing Show. We are in the fine city of Leeds, and that would give you a clue as to why we're in Leeds, because we're here to see Mr. Josh Warrington try and become a two-time world champion. We're going to get into big detail about that, of course. We've been all over fight week this week. But first, Anthony, as we like to do, we'll just recap some of the action that we've just seen at the weekend. And there was a big night in Dubai for Sonny Edwards, who got the job yep. done. There was. He, um, he put in a fantastic performance against Mohamed Wasim, who never stopped trying all night, but... Sonny was just um, that bit too good for him in every department really, he chose to stand there a little bit at times. There's a few highlight reels from Sonny there with um, his elusiveness yeah. and um, he's banging down the door for that big fight with um, Martinez. He is indeed. There was also David Evanesia and on a different bill of course, yes. I mean, they made very light work of Mets didn't he? I mean it was a, I suppose a mismatch on the night yes. but it's always been hard for Evanesia to get fights. Yeah, no disrespect to, uh, to Mets but yeah he was probably mm. the only available opponent really for David Evanesia. Yeah. Who's, um, he's looking like a monster at welterweight. Yeah. And they're, again, banging down the door for that world title shot, aren't they? And, and listen, the welterweight division is a division packed full of names, one of the toughest divisions in boxing to win a world title. But um, if not, he's going to keep defending that world title till he gets made mandatory for one of them. Yeah, there's a fight zone show in Newcastle as well with Tommy Hodgson topping the bill, big favourite in the North East. Big Dave Allen back, like, Dave yeah, Allen back in the ring. Lad. Yeah, he, need, yeah, he didn't have much competition on the night, but again, he just had to do what he did. But of course, good to see these characters back. But we are in Leeds, so we are focusing on all things Warrington Martinez 2. These two have done battle before, Josh coming out on top, but he said it was a very tough fight. So let's hear from Mr. Leeds himself. Here's Josh. I think it's the thing when your back's against the wall, and um, it's been a few years since I've been in that situation. You know, when I came through, even when I boxed him five years ago, the back went against the wall then, then I'd found Eliminator, Selby, Thampton, Gallard, all of them fights back against the wall. And um, when I'm an underdog, then just bring something else out of me. I just want to say, no, I can't. I can when people say that you can't, you know. So, um, yeah, I've certainly got the bit between my teeth. It's been a very good camp and I uh, can't wait for Saturday night. There's lots of freshness to you. Two days out, you know, you look like, you, you look like you're ready to go. Not like too soon, but you've got plenty more to give. I know you're near the weight as well. What changes have you made coming in, Scott? I know you mentioned about maybe you was overtrained in the past. What changes have you made in particular? Well, different moisturiser. Yeah, well, <laughs> Skin's for glowing. Good, good moisture. No, I think as you get older, you've got to listen to your body. Yeah. Um, when I look back, I want to look back at the, um, the old Kiko camp. Yeah. And I think we were training for around five months, yeah. you know, non-stop. And um, I must have gone to track about 20 times in that camp. Yeah. In, the, in that time, Argentina, oh. in that time, I, I probably thought that I need to be fit. I need yeah. to be fit. I need to be fit. And yeah, I need to be better, fit. But it's not always. Yeah. Sometimes but, less. Yeah. Is exactly. More. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in this camp, I've kind of been ticking over since the last ladder fight. But it's been more focused on game plan, boxing. Um, and obviously, my, my, my mental side has matured since five years ago. So. Um, you know, we've got to a stage of fitness and then we've started to pull back when we need to and then give it a right good push towards the end and I would kind of think to myself, should I have done some more oils? Should I have done some else? But I'm fit. I've, I've been breathing 12 rounds and sparring and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm in a very good place mentally and, uh, and physically as well, you know. So Saturday night will be a very good version of Josh Warrington. You've become two-time world champion on Saturday night. What's the motivation then? Is it taking this crazy lot over to America? What is it? That's it. And you nailed it on the head there. I've been wanting to do that for so long. Yeah. And I feel. COVID probably put yeah, up yeah. Like well, I've been unfortunate with COVID. Yeah. Um, and then obviously took me off the ball against Michelle Lara, so that put like a bit of a, a delay on things, shall, shall we say? But um, yeah, man, it opens the doors right up. You know, there's, I've got options. I was saying to Mrs. Um, you know, if maybe after getting ready for the second Larry rematch, like a few more, a few more. But then all of a sudden, I'm like, Impressive. love, you know what? There might be a number five or six in here, right? Because like I said, I mentioned all the names right there. And um, 
place. You've got Lee Wood, who's you know had that fantastic fight like last week or week before. I'd love to go down to City Grand, take over there. But for so long I've been saying I want to go to the States, so we'll see what happens. Kiko, welcome back. Uh, you look in tremendous shape. I've never seen you so confident going into a fight. That victory last time out just given you an incredible belief to defend your world championship successfully on Saturday. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Eddie, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, thank you for all the occasions that you counted me to come here. Yes, I'm really confident because, as I said last time, I was going to become world champion, and I did it. I said I was going to beat Kid Galahad within the distance, and I did. Uh, and the same will happen on Saturday. I will beat uh, Josh Warrington uh, within the distance. Um, maybe he's too confident, and he's not understanding that he's facing Kiko Martinez. That confidence that you have, all the fights that are available in the world, the rematch, unification fights, this is the fight that you wanted. You wanted to come back to Leeds and fight Josh Warrington. Why is that? Warrington is a great boxer. Yes, so, uh, because he's a great boxer. Josh Warrington is a great boxer. Um, he's won some fantastic fights in his career. He's beat Frampton, Selby. He also beat Kid Galahad and many, many more. And he's still a big name in boxing. Uh, I think he was doing well in the Lara fight until that accidental uh, clash of heads. Um, so he's, he's still got credibility in the world of boxing. And I want to go on to, be, to beat him to show that last time it wasn't just luck uh, when I won the world title against Kid Galahad. You truly believe that you will knock Josh Warrington out on Saturday night? Yes, I'm, I'm confident because I've visualised this in training. I've visualised knocking uh, Josh Warrington out. And when I say something, I'll do it. So you can't just believe it and then not, not follow through and do it. When I say things, I'm going to do it, and I'll do it on Saturday. So Josh in fine form. Kiko Martinez, though, we know he's always super confident, isn't he? And his career is incredible. When you think of the Bernard Dunn night back in 2007, and he's 36 now, but if someone said he's actually 52, you know, you'd you think well, he's been around that him. often. You wouldn't question them. And I think what's crazy for me, almost as crazy as that is, five years ago, Josh and Kiko had that tough fight. Here. Fighting yeah. a lot of people could have seen it either way. I fought Josh enough, but there was plenty of people who thought that it could have gone the other way as well. But the way this boxing world works is, Five years later, we're back. Mm. Kiko's world champion, and he's defending against Josh, who's, got, who's aiming to become a two-time world champion. Uh, crazy, but I'm really looking forward to Saturday night. Certainly the best fighter to ever come out of Spain, no doubt about that, and he's yeah. still going and still causing a threat. And the good thing about it, for Josh's point of view, is that his back is against the wall. You can see that. He's, he's feeling the pressure a bit. He's feeling the heat, so there's going to be no switch-off time for him. No way, and you can't have one second of mm. switch-off time with Kiko Martinez. We've seen that with Kid Galahad. Yeah. He didn't look like he was winning a second of a round, and then one shot changed it all with one of the knockouts of the year. I think, you know, you look at Josh, how he's speaking there, he looks, he looks very fresh, looks like a fantastic camp. Yeah. His best performances, as he said, as have been when he's back against the yeah. wall. And um, I believe he will need that Saturday night, but I think we will see that. Well, of course, it is an action-packed card, a very busy matchroom show, live on zone, of course. So what we do, wherever we're anywhere on fight week, we have to catch up with the, the chairman of matchroom sport. As we all know, that's Mr. Eddie Hearn. Well, Eddie, this card in Leeds, yeah. it's got a nice look about it. I like it. I think, I mean, look, you always need to get a bit lucky. I mean, even I would like to say to you that I knew that Conlon against Wood was just going to yeah. be one of the greatest fights of all <laughs> yeah. time. I thought it'd be good, but I didn't think it it'd be that, that good. good. And again, with this fight, I thought this fight would actually be better than Conlon Wood. I mean, if that's the case, we're, we're, we're lucky people. Mm. But, you know, Maxi Hughes against Ryan Walsh, yeah. a really good domestic fight with really world title ramifications. Ebony Bridges' Roman will be an absolute war. Yeah. I like Dalton Smith against Ray Millett. You know, everyone knows Ray Millett was an outstanding yeah. amateur. Sky Nicholson on the card as well. Callum French, Mally Wright. It's a really good night of boxing, and I think we're going to get a really good one. Well, there are some stories to be made on the card. It is that kind of a night mm. you feel. But in terms of the story that you absolutely want to happen, Josh Warrington coming through this contest because it opens up incredible doors now. He said yesterday, he quite fancies the city ground in yeah. Lee Wood, but I mean, obviously there's Vegas and there's all these other options. I mean, that's got to happen, hasn't it, from your point of view? Oh, and then think, you can open all I sorts of doors. I just think this is such a fascinating fight. I mean, look, Kiko Martinez knocks out Kid Galahad. Mm. You know, we, we sat down with him after the fight and said, look, now you've got the Kid Galahad rematch, you've got unification fights, you've got this. He said, I want Josh Warrington. And I thought hmm. it was going to be in Spain. He went, no, I want to go yeah. back to Leeds. Yeah. He said, I felt I should have beat him last time. I know I'll knock him out. He called this fight on. He's so confident. Yeah. And I think Josh, I think Josh is a little bit nervous because I think, not because he's worried about Kiko Martinez, but this is his career yeah. on the line, isn't it? Because Absolutely. Josh Warrington can't continue in the sport if he gets beat. If he loses like on this. Saturday night. I mean, he could, but he ain't yeah. going to want to fight at that level. No. So I think there's the fear in a fighter to say, mm. this could be it, and I don't want it to be it. 
I don't think yes. Josh Robinson's ready to retire. I don't think he wants to retire. But he also knows if I don't win this fight, I don't know if I can carry on. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting fight. I think it's a 50-50. I think it's going to be a war. The styles, these two styles will always gel. You know, Kid Galahad was a horrible style for, for Kiko Martinez, yeah. and he found a way to win. Warrington will be there, and he'll be in his face. He'll be frying combinations, and and I think we'll, I think this is going to gel into a brilliant fight. And you're right. You know, the winner can go on to fight Lee Wood. The winner can go on to fight Santa Cruz. The yeah. winner can go on to fight Navarrete. It's massive for Josh. This is a fight that opens up all the mega fights all over again. Ed, for me, I'm mad enough. Forget the Manchester Leeds rivalry. I know the atmosphere it is something mm. special. This has got to be one of the most mental atmospheres you've ever experienced yeah. in boxing. I'm right in saying that, right? Yeah, and you, Josh, amazing. Josh says, was it say eight years we've been coming here? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. I, mean, I remember it was on a Wednesday like a night. It was a Wednesday that night, was the wasn't first it? Night. Yes, yes. Josh Warrington and Steve Wood said to me, you should try the arena. Yeah. I'm thinking, the arena holds 12,000. Mm. And we went on a Wednesday, and we, yeah. went, we only did about three or 4,000. But it was like, it was wow, mad. It was yeah. mad. Was that? And then all of a sudden it got bigger and bigger, and now it's 12,000 full up. And I tell you, the atmosphere, incredible, incredible. I mean, again, going back two weeks, we saw 40% Irish, 60% Nottingham. Yeah. You're going to see 95% yeah. Leeds and probably a couple of Spaniards yeah. down on the floor. But not the floor, as in the floor seats. <laughs> uh, maybe on the floor, though. But I think that um, the, you're right, and this is a really special atmosphere. Yeah. And it's just one of those ones where when I, when I bring people here to the first time, they just go... Because it's a banked arena. Yeah. You know, so you just look up and you just think, what is this? This is Something absolutely else. mental. So I can't wait. Now, we know that the show goes on. It's, once this one's out of the way, yeah. you've got to think about the next three or four down the line. Mm. But just a bit of housekeeping, really. Again, so much chat with everything that's going on in the world about you, Sick, yeah. and everything else. Uh, uh, can you give us any. Yeah, I on think that? the fight's going to happen. You know, I think uh, I've been backwards and forwards. And, you know, this week, of course, we heard the news that. Uh, Usyk's been given permission to leave the country and start camp. He's done that now. Has he actually left? The yeah, country? I believe left so. Now. And uh, he, he prepares now for camp for, for a June fight. Um, AJ's really happy. You know, he turned down. A, he would have been sick because he turned down a lot of money to to step aside. Yeah. And now, now all of a sudden, he wasn't stepping yeah. aside, and he wasn't getting any money. <laughs> so he's probably quite relieved because this is the fight that he wants. Yeah. You know, and um, this fight will happen. It looks like middle end of June. And we'll be speaking to Alex Krasik over the weekend and nailing down the location and the date. And, uh, yeah, this almost certainly looks like it's ready to go. Ed, we imagine that's going to be a stadium fight. And talking to stadium fights with a fighter who you promote, Demetrius Andrade, yeah. Zach Parker, that's going to happen in Derby. You're confident yeah, that's going to like happen? It. Yeah, May 21st, I think, the same yes. night. We've got Boazzi and Richards as well. It's great a fight. fight. You know, that's a great fight. Um, I think it's, a, it's good to see. Like, Zach Parker's a good young fighter from Derby. Yeah. Derby County Stadium is ambitious, but Getting why not? Behind you know, him, yeah. I mean, it you don't always have to do 40,000. Yes. We did 20,000 at Goodison Park with yeah. Bellevue, and it was an amazing night. So, yeah. good fight for the division. And, uh, yeah, I think I believe Demetrius Andre will win that fight. Yeah. What's this here about you want to be James Bond? Is that... It was just that, yeah. you know, I, I think that sometimes I'm in a mischievous mood, and I like yeah. winding people up. <laughs> and I just did an interview, and I just said that I was looking well at the moment, lost a bit of weight. I think the call from, you know, to be the new yeah. James Bond is coming. Oh, cool. And people were going into my social going, is he serious? <laughs> so you I weren't mean, being serious? Well, of course I was. <laughs> Why not? What are you trying to say, Crosby? Make me chum with you. Mate, <laughs> Brosnan, you fought Brosnan. Basil and Bond. Uh, Basil and Bond. That's about it, I think. Yeah. No, I just like to have a bit of fun and wind people yeah. up. Well, there we have it. Eddie Hearn with plenty to say. Always good catching up with him as well. Again, he just loves it, doesn't he? I mean, he, he, this is a man enjoying his job. He does. He does. And um, as I said before, again, he gives, uh, he gives great time mm. to all platforms. And listen, don't, don't rule out the James Bond <laughs> show. I, I can see a young Pierce Brosnan there. Creep. There we are. <laughs> right, anyway, I think just with that, it's now time to go to the one and only feature, Crawler's Corner. Ray, you've wrongly landed yourself on death row. Your final meal, what is it? Listen, my doctor says that I am on death row. <laughs> Years of abusing myself. And I mean food wise, I don't mean like in a sexual way, but um, <laughs> I think it's got a bit, an extra large, special naan doner kebab. I think if I was to go out tomorrow night, I think I'd have to go with a steak, a good ribeye steak. There's one sports person, and you can train past or present for a boxing fight. Who is it? David Batty. 
Shame. Yeah, he was lively, wasn't he? Batter, good yeah, player. He was well, lively. But, uh, just, uh, I'm cult, allowed to say a, that. He's a cult hero of Leeds. Yeah. Um, I hear stories that he wasn't the best of trainers. In fact, like he didn't even train with first team. He used to just go put him in a corner and let him just kick a ball. And uh, it was one of them where he hardly trained, but he just turned up on game day. So I think uh, I've got an easy job there. You have to be like one of the biggest in the world. So like LeBron James, Tom Brady, Something you know, so, someone, Ronaldo, just a megastar, because that's, that means I'll make as much money as possible. If you cut, if you, hopefully you cast wrestling as real sport. Too right, right it's dude. real. It is, it absolutely is real. I would like to train either The Rock or Triple H. Watch karaoke song. Summer of 69. Oh, <laughs> what a song, what a song. Well, I wanted one for Christmas last time, but yeah. karaoke machine for hours. That's so I can practice behind closed doors before yeah, I Yeah, before you nail it. world. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I don't actually really have any song, but I think I can sing every song that goes. Yeah. I, I have a few rebel ballads in the, in the back I burner. Another rebel ballad, oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I, you know what? I need about eight pints. Yes. Before eight pints of Guinness before I can Next sing. It. If you're buying, if you're that. buying, I'll sing Mate, for you. If you're gonna <laughs> sing, I'll be buying. <laughs> Listen, when I've got guitar at home, I feel I'm fucking I'm Nolan Liam all in one. Don't Rolled sound like that. And the missus tells me. Oh, you do, you do, mate. Listen, I'm on the guitar. <laughs> the singing, it's delicious. Sounds like you can't get in run over. One person in boxing you can swerve on a night out. Give me his name. That's just a great one, question. Just one. Kel Brook. Oh, well, you know, a couple of Guinnesses in Kel. It ain't a pretty sight. Yeah, uh, Kel, there's a few to be fair. Uh, who else? Let's throw a few more under the bus. Who's a nightmare when they've had a drink? Bell you not great. Bell you Bell not, you not great. Who for you? Fucking hell, mate. Come on, you had a lot in your oh, gym. Oh, mate, I've had a few. Coming through. It's got to mate, be one Scotty of the Smiths, Cardle, it? No, Oh, Scotty oh Cardle, mate, yeah, yeah, Scotty Cardle, Stephen Smith, Stephen Smith, but great crack. Stephen yeah. Smith. Yeah, I think that'd be it. Imagine Scott Craig on the drink. Oh, oh, no. You've got to go on a lads' holiday with Maxie and Josh, yeah? yeah? But you've got to pick where you go in. You can't say Whitber. He's a miserable bastard. Yeah, I won't go on a holiday with him, so. The most two-boring people in the world. It'd have to be somewhere like we'd be our scarver on Mabel Thor. <laughs> be a sheep. That's what can you ask for. With a caravan. Do you know what I mean? He'd be happy then. Fishing chips, caravan, and he's fucking wanking. Crawler's corner there, Anthony. Yeah. Just living the dream. Ah, tell me about it, mate. Favourite part of the show. Who featured in there obviously was Ebony Bridges, yeah. one of the many that we saw. Um, we did catch up with Ebony because of course she does have some serious business to take care of. It is an IBF bantamweight world title fight against Roman. So we had, well, a chance to catch up and get her thoughts on the fight. Did you put this as the best camp of your career? Oh, easy. I mean, pretty much every single camp that I've had has been a problem. Like yeah. injuries, um, you know, flying around the world here, there and everywhere, change of trainers, you know, different trainers every camp, you know, because of like I'm stuck in the UK. This was, honestly, I, and, I, and I, everyone knows amateur, I haven't had a training uh, camp or I haven't been injured or, or nursing something or coming into some kind of thing. And I, I honestly, my headspace for this, I've been settled in the country, you know, Mark's amazing, my body's amazing, my mind's amazing. I mean, you know, like, I, I, I can't, I really can't say that it's been any better camp. Have you found your home now with Mark Tibbs? Yeah, I think so, you know, um, I just love it there. Obviously, Mark's amazing, he's, you know, he's had to put up a bit to work with me, no, but we do, we work really well together, we gelled really well, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's been unreal. The environment, there, the boys from the gym, you know, obviously, and um, yeah, like, it's, it's great. Ebony on, Ebony, on Saturday night, you become world champion. What do you think the reaction will be back home? Australia boxing's flying at the moment. Yeah. You'll be right up there, you'll be a spearhead, one of those. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, Oz, Oz boxing is, is getting much more traction at the moment, you know, um, but we don't have like a really big, you know, Aussie women name, obviously yeah. me, but I mean, not a world champion. So me being able to get a world champion and, and through everything that I've done, showing that you can just go after your dreams and you go for them and you can yeah. make it happen. For me to bring back, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be huge for Australia. Do you know what I mean? I know all of Australia is behind me and backing me. Um, it's a it's a big fight, and um, yeah, I'm really excited. I know you're from different cities, but I had a word with Sky earlier. She was saying that you're big mates, yeah. and again, she's going to base herself permanently in the yeah. UK now. She just thinks all the opportunities are going to be here. I mean, I know you're with Mark now, but you've, as you said yourself, you've been to in and fro yeah. and running around to the states and everything else. Yeah. 
she feels it's got to be the UK. Yeah. Are you are you going to permanently base yourself here now? I mean, yeah, for my camps, look, I have a boyfriend at home, you know, that I haven't, yeah, yeah. I've seen for like 10 weeks in two years. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be there when I get back. But no, honestly, like I do, I have family. And I have, the problem is I have commitments home. I've got a house, I've got everything there. Yeah. So it's not just, it is much my decision and, and, and trust me, I want to be here. But if I am able to just come for my camps and I'm able to do all that kind of stuff and it works, then okay. But this is something I'm not even thinking about right now. Right now I'm thinking about Roman beating her up and winning that belt. And then whatever happens after that, I don't have a ticket home. Like I, I don't have a return ticket because I don't know when I'm going home because I don't know what's going to happen. All I care about is Saturday night and winning that belt. And once I win that belt, whatever happens, I'm going to go with it. Do you know what I mean? So we'll talk about that then. So Ebony Bridges in fine form and a big shot for her, of course, at the weekend. But let's just have a look at the weigh-in and how things panned out. And out of the scale, please welcome the blonde bomber, Ebony Bridges. scale, the defending champion Maria Cecilia Roman. One hundred and sixteen point seven pounds for the defending world champion. One hundred and sixteen point seven pounds. And now the scale, the defending world champion, Kiko La Sensacion Martinez. Stronger, better, better boxing ability. You can't beat me. 
You can't be in the department. You can't work with me. You can't work with me. I love the beat. So the weigh-in done, all the formalities are over in Leeds now. We've been around it all week and it's nearly time to just look forward yeah. to the fights themselves. We spoke to Eddie about the car, but what now, after you've looked at everybody up close, jumps out at you? Other, other than the main event, which screams excitement and you can only imagine what the atmosphere is going to be like, I really like the looks of it, Max Hughes and Ryan Walsh. I think that's going to be a fantastic fight, two consummate professionals, two great lads, just like Dalton Smith, Ray Moylet. Yeah. Um, does Dalton prove that he's, he is a world-class prospect that everyone's saying or does Ray still have a little bit too much for the youngster maybe we'll see it's, it's a great fight it is indeed he'll have great support from the west of Ireland as well back him in here and at home obviously Ray Moylet but yeah as you say Dalton Smith a real talent as yeah. well so plenty to look forward to in that and against Sky Nicholson on the card as well her yeah. second pro fight she's been getting, getting a lot of attention this week and lots of local Yorkshire talent as well so great fights on the card but before we go on yep 100 pounds your charity bet what's it gonna be right this week so before we come to leeds i'm going harry scarf to get the win and then it's a treble up here i'm going sky nicholson to win but on points then i'm going ebony bridges just for the win she becomes world champion i believe and then in the main event i'm going for josh josh to get the win if you want to get adventurous josh like i think might do it late on but i'm just gonna say josh with the win so that's it um, the charity bet. And that'll be a tidy sum if it comes in. Where's it going? It's going to go to Maverick Stars, a charity we both know yeah. very well. Yep, yeah. does great work in the boxing it does. community. It does, Helping lots of disadvantaged kids. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. But before we go, of course, there's long form interviews, the bits and pieces that, of course, that we've made today and all week. But um, we're not finished yet. We're going to be at the fight as well. So there'll be yeah. all the post fight reaction that you can catch on the YouTube channel, as well as all the long form interviews, as I say, and some of the characters that you haven't seen in the boxing show today. There's plenty more. We've caught with loads of people here in Leeds. So get to the YouTube channel, subscribe, like, do the business, and we'll be around next week somewhere, aren't we? We will. We will show up somewhere on the road again, I'm yep. sure. But there's some big fights coming up. There is indeed. Thank you very much indeed for watching the Lightweight Boxing Show.